Hi, I'm Nick Summers for Engadget, and we're here in Bristol looking at the Wildcat, which is an autonomous vehicle developed by BAE. Now, the purpose of this project is to look at two different areas, one of which is sort of the legal and insurance aspects of owning and driving one of these autonomous vehicles, and the second one is to see how they can make them more approachable for the public. So the idea being that they're going to use this here in and around the university, as well as on private and public roads, uh, to see how they can sort of integrate them properly uh, into the public. So we're really looking at public acceptability around driverless cars and what that really means on the UK's network going forward. So there's some particular barriers that we need to overcome, such as in the insurance market, but also legal barriers to overcome as well. So the project will be looking at developing what those scenarios might be around those barriers and then identifying the technologies to actually see what we can do to overcome them, simulate them in a test environment before testing those technologies on our, on our Wildcat on closed networks and then open networks on Bristol and South Gloucestershire's roads. This car has a lot of technology packed into it. Which one of those sensors are most important? You know, what sort of data are you going to be collecting and looking at that's going to shape your sort of analysis, I suppose? The, the main, main sensor is not necessarily about the, the radar or the LiDAR kind of uh, technologies that we've got. It's about people's responses to, to the environments that they're going to be put in. What's it like to be in a driverless car? What's it like not to have your, your hands on the wheel, say, in, in 20 or 30 years' time? And in, in doing so, in understanding the behavioural issues, understanding the underlying trust issues, then we can develop better solutions to, to make sure that they can become a reality. So this is not meant to be a product. This is a test bed for trying driverless vehicles technology. So the way we fit it out is in a very generic way. So we've got lots of sensor mounting points down the front, lots of mounting points at the top, and we can try out different combinations of sensors in different locations to understand how the technology will be developed in the future and validate it on the streets of Bristol and South Gloucestershire. Now the most prominent part of the car has to be this thing on top. Can you explain what the deal is with the uh, lasers here? Okay, so this is the Velodyne sensor. Um, this is a, a very common sensor used for driverless vehicles. So there's 64 spinning lasers out in concentric circles and it really came out of the DARPA Grand Challenge um, and lots of the vehicles used it to produce a very detailed map of what's going on around the vehicle. Um, you can have perhaps too much detail, there's like a million points a second that come out of it um, and you don't need all of that information but it's a great sensor to start with to understand what information do you need. Um, here you can see a picture of the Velodyne sensor. So here you can see the concentric circles that are coming out from the sensor. And if in real time you can put your hand up and wave, and we're just here. So you can see the extent of the sensor. It covers virtually the entire car park here. So you get a lot of information. Uh, the distance between the sensors gets greater the further you go out. Um, but what we can do is we can take that information and cluster it into objects and then decide what to do about those objects. And do you always plan to have two engineers in here or would you perhaps have someone that isn't used to autonomous cars in order to get their reaction? How would you normally run a sort of a test run with this? So um, on, um, in some situations we would have a safety driver but in some situations we would have no people in the car whatsoever. So you would have a remote e-stop for safety reasons um, but given the safety cases of operating on public roads it's likely that we'll have a safety driver and we would also have, an op we would have someone in here that was um, observing what the computer was doing. What we're looking to do uh, within the three years is to get a good understanding of the legal impact and the insurance regulations to understand, well, can we replace this person and just put a normal person that doesn't know anything about driverless vehicles in it? I mean, to put something like this on private roads, but also public roads, like what sort of precautions do you have to take uh, to make sure it's safe and, and ready? So we have to have a solid safety case for the system that's going to operate on a public road. Um, running it in a very congested area like the centre of Bristol is probably beyond this project. And um, what we'll be looking to do is run it in controlled areas where we can get a good understanding of how the vehicle operates in certain situations. You mentioned that you wanted to create a test site. How important will it be for the UK to have a test site like that for driverless it cars? It's absolutely critical. There's no other country in the world doing anything like what we're doing at the moment. And the, the, clearly the investment by the Department of Transport is absolutely key in us leveraging that position. So to have an independent UK test site 
allowing anybody to come and test those different technologies that they're thinking about developing and understand the behavioural responses to that is absolutely fantastic to enable additional jobs and the economic benefit as a result. And the plan is to have this both on private roads and public roads, is that absolutely, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Has that ever been done before, you know, to have a driverless car on a public road here um, in the UK? No, not to the, not in the same manner that we are at the moment. So having the simulation is really important, testing it on closed roads and then subject to the, the legal frameworks that we need to establish. Um, having them on the, in, on the roads in Bristol and South Gloucestershire. The UK's Transport Research Laboratory is looking at how autonomous vehicles can take and return control in a way that's not dangerous or uncomfortable for the driver.